Assalamu alaikum and to my dear students, this is Ms. Farheen, your science teacher. Um, today, I'm going to start a new chapter, Adaptations in Animals. For that, you need to open up your science book, uh, page number 57, unit 3, The World of the Living, chapter 8, Adaptations in Animals, page number 57. I hope that everyone is with me. Start uh, with the chapter. We are going to do the warm up as usual uh, on page number 57. Here there are animals hiding in the picture and there are some scramble words. You have to unscramble them and arrange them. The first picture is this one. Uh, we can find um, a lion. Yes. The second one is this one. The animal which is hidden in it and the helping word cheetah third one the animal which is hidden and the helping word help us to make it as, as owl the fourth one is actually an easy one fox so this ends uh, the warm-up okay so the name of the chapter is adaptations in animals as we have discussed this earlier also in the previous chapter, Adaptations in Plants, that adaptation is a natural process through which uh, plants adjust to their surroundings. The same way adaptation is a natural process through which animals adjust to their surroundings. The process which enables animals to adjust to their surroundings in order to ensure survival. It means having certain body parts or behaviors. These body parts and behaviors help them to adapt to the environment so in this chapter we're going to discuss three major categories adaptations to habitat adaptations for food and adapting to be safe first we're going to discuss about adaptations to habitat now in habitat this is important to understand that what really habitat habitat is a place where an animal lives animals are found all over the world some animals live in hot places and some live in cold places some live in high mountains, some in the deep oceans. So the natural surrounding where an animal lives is called its habitat. For example, the uh, camel lives uh, in a desert. So we say that the habitat of a camel is a desert. Okay, so this we have discussed uh, in adaptation in plants also that um, we as human beings also adapt to the environment so think about the way you dress in the winter we do not dress the same as summers we do not wear shorts and bathing suit when it's snowing outside we wear warm clothes and maybe even a hat and mittens to protect ourselves from the weather so even if we change our house the human beings we take time we adapt to the environment the same way the plants and the animals also do and it takes many years for animals to adapt themselves to their surrounding. Have you ever wondered how animals are able to survive in the wild? Animals have certain adaptations that help them to survive. And these adaptations can be the change in their body parts or their behaviors, which help them to survive in the environment. Okay, so starting with the... Uh, the adaptations to habitat, uh, depending upon whether an animal lives on land, water or air, it possesses various features which enable it to survive on, in its own habitat. So first we are going to discuss about terrestrial animals. Um, we have done terrestrial plants, the plants that live on land, the same way terrestrial animals are those animals that live on land. There are special features uh, that they have, uh, like they breathe through lungs lion tigers horses dogs cats they are uh, some of the terrestrial animals and their body is suited to live on land accordingly they show different adaptive features so they breathe through lungs similarly there are insects also on the land and they the insects they um, do not have lungs they breathe with the help of air holes that are known as spiracles present on their body surfaces as you can see in the picture that uh, the terrestrial animals mammals are having the lungs and uh, the insects are having spiracles 
now in uh, terrestrial animals we'll go step by step first we are going to discuss about animals in plains so most animals which live on land on hard land surface like forests and grasslands have strong legs to run fast like lions uh, they have strong legs to run fast and uh, there are two purposes for that uh, these uh, strong legs help them to catch their prey and they help them to run away from their enemies so there are two purposes for that now coming to the grass eating animals like horses and cows have toes in the form of hooves um if you have noted down the cows um in idul azha that they have hooves um and these hooves actually help them to move on soft and uh, wet land um then coming to the boring animals like uh, rabbits and moles they have sharp claws to dig the ground and make burrows uh snakes uh, the reptiles from from the reptile family uh, snakes do not do not have uh, legs um uh, they live in narrow holes in ant hills trees or holes made by other animals and they move by pushing against the ground with their tough scales can you see the scales on in the picture on their body so they actually this uh, these scales they move these uh, scales against the ground and they move with the help of that So next is animals in mountains um animals like mountain goats and yaks uh living in the cold conditions of high mountains have a thick thick coat of hair to protect themselves against the severe cold as you can see in the picture theek okay, hai because mostly in mountains uh, it's really cold over there so they actually have these kind of uh, adaptation uh then mountain goats are sure footed um uh they so that they can run up the vertical rocks as you can see in the picture that there is a vertical rock and they can sit or uh, they were sitting on the narrow ledges so these sure footed actually help them to um uh, survive over there to uh, help them to uh, move on those spaces so now coming to animals in deserts um the famous animal living in desert is camel and mostly we're going to discuss the uh, camel over here in this chapter uh camel um is um has bra- has brought padded feet to walk on sand um comfortably on sand after and then uh, a very strange thing is that a very um actually exciting thing that their hump stores extra food and water if you have uh, ever had a ride on, on camel you would have uh, noticed on the hump on its body in the picture also it's very visible um that after the camel eats food the extra food and water changes into fat and gets stored in the camel hump uh then the camel can go on for days without food and water so um this is some this is an adaptation um that allah subhanahu wa taala has uh, uh created in them and because in desert there is very less water so they can actually survive without water for a long time um another amazing thing is that that they have long thick eyelashes to keep them safe from sand during sandstorm because in desert there's a lot of sandstorm so these eyelashes they're very beautiful and they actually protect them from those uh, sand so that they can um these sand the sand can go not go inside their eyes and disturb them even they have uh, they can even close their nose during sandstorm isn't it amazing uh, mother it's really good um really exciting that they can close their nose during sandstorm estivation so estivation is something um that there are some animals that do not like summers uh, like uh, most of us do not like summers because of the heat of the sun and the sweating so to beat the daytime heat many desert animals such as desert rats ra- come out in search of food only during the night time and some animals stay inside their holes during the hot summer months without eating any food so they go for a long period of summer sleep and this um uh, during the summer sleep um they are inactive they do not uh, they just sleep all the all the months so this long summer sleep is known as estivation uh because they do not like uh, the weather 
and uh, what do you think that what will happen are there some animals who are like winters and they uh, hide themselves let's see so now we are going to discuss about animals in cold and snow bound regions so snow leopard has a thick white coat of hair on its body as you can see in the picture it's looking really beautiful uh, similarly polar bear and polar fox have thick white fur on their body and the fur not only protects them from the severe cold but the white color also makes them less visible against the white background they actually blend to the environment and this help them to approach their food without being noticed this blending we are going to discuss later on also and there also i'm going to discuss this again uh seals walruses and penguins have blubber now what is blubber blubber is actually a thick coat of thick layer of fat which keeps their body warm in their cold freezing conditions so if you have noticed uh, uh seals and penguins they have a very thick coat um of fat um which is very visible so they actually help them to adapt to the environment okay so here uh, there are some birds that um, survive the winter by going to warmer places and they move uh, from one place to another um, this is a large scale movement that means that they uh, move in a group um, to warmer places to protect them from winters and they return to their original homes when the winter is over um, uh, even you can notice them during winters uh these birds they some of them they come to pakistan also so you can see that also so uh, around you hibernation okay um when we were doing estivation at that time i told you that there maybe there are some animals that uh, hide themselves in winters so yes there are frogs snakes and lizards if you have observed that lizards uh, uh, in winters they usually go away so actually they go for hibern they actually hibernate themselves they um uh, go for a long uh, winter sleep and they do not eat or drink during this period they keep lying in a safe place like a cave hole or burrow to save energy so this um, period of winter sleep is called hibernation um uh that's an opposite of estivation so estivation is a long summer sleep and hibernation is a long winter sleep so they're opposite to each other so this ends the lecture for today uh we are done with terrestrial animals uh now we're going to discuss uh, we'll discuss uh, in the next uh, lecture about different other animals living in different habitat so um now in the end i would like to give a small activity to you that uh, you can f you can go and search on the internet that uh, which is the migratory bird which actually travels to pakistan in winters so there is a very special kind of a bird that you can find out and um, the answer will be given in the next uh, lecture so take care and allah hafiz for today